Hi everyone and welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions you have related to electrical and life safety. Today we've been asked to cover an important topic we get a lot of questions about, and that is how many exit access doors do I need from a particular space? In order to answer this question, we'll use NFPA Link, which is our easy to use digital access tool for NFPA codes and standards. Like so many code questions, the answer to how many exit access doors does my space require isn't black and white, right? There's gonna, it's gonna depend on a lot of different factors, mainly what is your occupancy classification. So while I won't be able to answer that question directly, I will hopefully be able to provide you some tools and some knowledge of where in the code to go in order to answer this question for your particular situation. So we're gonna use NFPA 101, the life safety code, to answer this question. And it's important to keep in mind that the life safety code isn't specifically gonna call out a number of exit access doors that you're required to have from a space. Instead, this is gonna be determined by your common path of travel. So if you're not familiar with what common path of travel is, we'll head to the definition in chapter three and take a look. So common path of travel is defined in 3348 as the portion of the exit access that must be traversed before two separate and distinct paths of travel to two exits are available. So one way this can be accomplished to minimize that common path of travel is to provide multiple exit access doors from a space. But you need to keep in mind that those exit access doors have to provide a path to separate exits. So if you go out those two separate exit access doors and let's say they both lead to the same hallway and that hallway leads you to one exit so you go out those doors and in both cases you have to turn right then that is still all considered part of your common path of travel because your paths converge so even though from that room or space you had a choice in which exit access door to use because once you got out of that exit access door you had to go the same direction, that's still considered part of your common path of travel. Now let's say you went out those doors and you could go left or right to two different exits, then that's how you would minimize your common path of travel. So let's take a look at daycare, new daycare. As I mentioned, it's gonna depend on your occupancy classification. So I could scroll through and find it, but I'm gonna use the search feature in order to find the common path of travel for new daycare occupancies. Oops, forgot the L. And here we can see in 16.252, the requirements for common path of travel. So if you have a fully sprinklered building, so it's protected throughout by an approved supervised automatic sprinkler system, then you can have 100 feet of common path of travel. If you are unsprinklered, then it's only 75 feet. So you'll see the common path of travel limitations in the 0.2.5 section for all occupancy classifications. We hope that will help you answer the question, how many exit access doors are needed from this space? For more info about how NFPA Link gives you the knowledge you need to get the job done right, visit www.nfpa.org/link. Thanks for watching.